Oh, hello, Juno. Is the camera rolling? How's the lighting? All right, your job is you can go lay down now. So I want to go over this question that um, came up from the video I did on Defense Drive. And it's from K9 underscore or K9 pack underscore leader. And it's regarding a male Doberman. He was asking about um, how do you deal with unpredictable biting um, and when you should correct uh, something of that nature. And also an incident that happened, I'm assuming it's with the owner. It says the handler uh, was bit when the dog went after a dog and was corrected for doing so. So what is happening with that Doberman, it's, it is being pushed into a fight behavior. So this is a, where a lot of the redirection issues stem from. Um, and it doesn't mean that like Juno uh, is a very high defense dog and he has a pretty strong fight behavior. Stronger fight behavior than my other two confident high defense dogs, uh, Tanaya and uh, Edie. Now, if, if I correct Juno and then I don't feel I made my point, even though he has yield to that or he has let go of it or whatever it is I'm asking him to let go of. Um, but if I step in and I want to correct him even firmer and even harder, he's only going to tolerate that for so much where, you know, he hasn't done it because I can read I can read him, you know, and I know how far to push him. But he's a dog that will you know, go into a fight. And I've seen them do that with, with dogs here when they're playing and they're getting too rough with them. And they'll push them into a fight behavior. And again, it doesn't mean he's ripping the dog apart. It's just the term going into fight. So going in and correcting that dog, going in and, and terminating that behavior or knocking that behavior down. So I don't know what this Doberman's defense drive is. I don't know what this Doberman's prey drive is. But all I know is that it sounds like through the corrections, this Doberman's being pushed into a fight behavior. Now, you, two, you know, a few things can be happening. Um, you could be, you know, the handler could be suppressing um, a particular drive or suppressing a particular behavior. And so let's take a dog, for instance, and, and I've seen this with really insecure dogs that are, you know, low defense, very high flight, and then they are trying to get the dog to remain in a heel while the dog is in a panic and trying to go in the flight. And the way they're trying to do that is through firm, strong corrections, uh, prong collar, e collar, whatever the tool might be. And so what you're, what's happening there with that dog is, um, these are three instinctual drives for survival, so we always have to remember that. So what's happening is that dog's flight behavior is being squelched, right? It's being suppressed. And so what option does that dog have? Flight, fight, or freeze, right? So the freeze would be a shutdown, and fight would be redirecting on the handler. So how do you get around that? Is that you allow the dog, you know, before you start working it in close quarters, you take it out on the long line, and you allow it to go in the flight, and you work it back with you. Not into you all the way, but just to follow you, to come out of flight, maybe come into you if the pack drives high, and it will recall into you. And so it starts reprogramming the dog that when it gets panic, it goes into flight. It learns that, oh, safety is back with the handler, right? But if I'm the handler and I'm restricting that flight and I'm suppressing that flight through heavy corrections, I'm not giving the dog, you know, more than other, two other options to fight or freeze or, or, or shut down. Now, the same can hold true for a dog that's very high in prey drive. So if a dog, and, and again, dog reactivity loads in the predatory drive. So if a dog, you know, they're, they're so triggered by dogs, if they hear just dog tags, that dog will alert and it's already in this high state of arousal. That is loading in a predatory drive. Now, if the dog has really high prey drive, then you're dealing with a lot more adrenaline as well. So for me, I'm gonna work the long line and I'm gonna work my recall, and I'm gonna work my let's go, so I'm gonna work the dog back into a heel. Once I have that foundation built, then I'm gonna put the dog out in front of dogs in the field, in the parks, and I'm gonna start recalling the dog from that dog that he's starting to trigger on before he triggers. And then once that tamps down, then I'll bring the dog into a heel, and I'll start walking him towards that dog. And I'll try and keep him in that heel. And if he starts blowing out of the heel, I'm not going to force him to stay into it. This is in the, in, in the you know, 
the very beginning of the training program. Later, I can add a leave it once that dog understands his safety is here, I have more control of the adrenaline. But if the dog starts to blow out of the heel and he wants to go after that dog, granted the dog's at distance, I'm gonna let him out on the long line and I'll recall him back again. What you're dealing with is an insecurity most of the time. And so what, by letting that dog break away from me, now I'm creating this distance where now the dog's away from good information. Now the dog is away from its safety point. And I'm allowing that dog to have that, ex that experience of being away from me, and then I recall the dog, or I redirect it back to me with a let's go, and then I'm saying, okay, come back into safety, how do you feel here? So it's just a neural pathway that you're building, right? Not through correction, but through capitalizing on the dog's emotional component, insecure, and also bringing that dog back into where you're gonna, you know, you're teaching the dog, you know, come back in here, you're gonna be safe, there's gonna be directions, it's not gonna be handled with consequences. Down the road, when the dog starts to understand that and the relationship's stronger, then you're gonna be able to add that leave it in there, and by the time you get to that point, you've knocked so much adrenaline down and the relationship between you and that dog's much stronger through the course of building these components you know, through direction, now when you start administering like these corrections, they're not going to be as strong because you, you've tamped all this down in the dog, you know. So I just wanted to kind of answer that question because it was a good question. And that's most likely a dog that's being pushed into a fight behavior. The, the bites are not, in my opinion, not unpredictable. What happens is that the signaling from the dog has gotten much shorter or much smaller. The fuse of the dog has actually gotten much shorter as far as the tolerance for what that dog can handle from what's coming from the handler, right? So now you have to kind of go backtrack and you have to like start from scratch to some degree. I would let the dog out on a long line and do exactly what I was saying and work the dog back into you. So he sees when he's, there's, you're having to reprogram because when he sees a dog, they're almost anticipating a strong correction. You have to reprogram and say, when you see the dog, I need you to come back to me, or I need you to turn and follow and move away from the dog. So anyways, I hope that kind of clears it up. That was a good question, so I really wanted to get back on top of that and answer it. So I uh, hope that helps with uh, even more explanation of defense drive. All right, thanks for watching.